This is the second video of my forecasting tutorial. Um, this is forecasting for call centers and specifically we are analyzing Kansas City's 311 call volumes. Um, in this video we will be looking at calls received and calls abandoned and we will see what high abandonment of calls does to our um, call statistics. So I have the data here. I deleted all the columns that we will not be using in this tutorial. Um, and so first of all, let me tell you that what I want to do is I want to see total monthly call volumes, calls received and calls abandoned. And how I do that is I create a pivot table. So I click somewhere in my data, go to insert pivot table, click OK. Um, new sheet is created, empty pivot table is created, and I will add dates into my rows calls received and calls abandoned into my values. And now you can see that I'm, I'm seeing pretty much exactly the same thing that I had in my original data. Well, but why, why I created pivot table is because it allows me to group my data by month. So I'm clicking, right, I'm right clicking on any of the dates here. So then I select group and I select group by years and months, hit OK. And now I'm just going to redesign this table by selecting different layout that is tabular layout. This way I see number, year number in column A, mon month name in column B. Um, and you can see we have 2016. We're not going to look at 2016 data, so I'm going to remove that from my pivot table. Um, let's also just change the formatting of the numbers here. I want to add the comma and remove decimal points. All right. So let's start by charting this data. I click somewhere in the pivot table, go to insert, select the chart that I would like to see. Um, I hate seeing these numbers in my, in my chart or these buttons, so I will hide them all. And now I will just apply quick styling from Excel. I like this style and I will select a different layout at chart title. There's my title. And let's make this chart bigger and let's, let's qu very quickly analyze it. So blue line tells me how many calls received, uh, how many calls were received in each month. And then the orange line tells me how many calls were abandoned in each line, uh, each month. And these are the total calls. So you can look at this data year by year. You, the best thing to do when you start looking at your data is to search for different trends and seasonalities. Um, and you can see that in 2014, most, most of the months, uh, there was an upward trend. Then the call volume kind of decreased. And in 2015, you again had an upward trend. Uh, another thing that I can see immediately is this call volume in October. It tends to peak in October in 2013 and 2014. It somewhat peaked in 2015. However, the summer call volume was really high. It was higher than the October peak, right? It was also much higher than corresponding months in 2014 and 2013. Well, that tells me there was something that there was something unusual happening in 2015. Um, and it becomes a bit clearer when you compare the calls received to calls abandoned. When you're looking at the calls abandoned, you can see that there was an increase in calls abandoned in 2015. So let me tell you what happens when, when, when you see high calls abandoned in your call center. Imagine that you are a caller, you call 311, you want to report something, right? And nobody picks up the phone for two minutes. Well, most likely you're going to hang up and dial the 311 number again. Uh, and then again, and until you hear from someone and un until you just really give up, right? Uh, and that's what very likely happened here. Um, when that happens, your calls received numbers are skewed because instead of seeing, let's say, 40,000 calls because you really had 40,000 callers, 
you're seeing 50,000 cars because 10,000 of these cars were probably repeat cars like we just discussed. So the job that you as an analyst have to do here is um, to clean up the data here and estimate what the true calls received numbers are um, in these three months or four months of June, July, August and September. And let me show you how to do that. So first of all, I'm going to copy my data to a new sheet. Let's rename these columns. Freeze the first row. Um, and let's highlight the four months that we are analyzing here. June, July, August, September. You can clearly see right here that the cause abandoned are much higher than during the surrounding months. And let's delete that grand total because it's confusing. All right, so what I'm going to do, I am going to estimate what would the calls abandoned be during these four months if these months were just like any other month? Now, back in the chart, you can see that most of the time calls abandoned are, are somewhat steady, right? So for my estimate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take average of April, May, October and November the surrounding four months. So the average of these four months, April, May, April, May October, November, the average is 2602. I'm going to enter 2602 right here. For the remaining months, I'm just going to copy the actual cause abandoned. And I'm going to name this column as adjusted abandoned. Let's copy the formatting as well. All right, so my estimate is that each of these months there were about 2,600 calls that uh, abandoned calls that wouldn't have happened if we didn't have any operational issues in our call center. Now, like I mentioned before, um, many of these callers here probably call the call center again, right? So. Let's try to estimate how many callers would have called again. Um, and knowing that it's a 311 call center, the repeat calls uh, probably make up high percentage of the abandoned calls. I would say anywhere between 70 to 120%. I might be off, I might be right, I don't know. We'll find out soon. So I'm adding two new columns. Uh, in these two columns, I will be estimating how many how many uh, calls, repeat calls we received. Um, now, keep in mind, repeat calls um, are calculated from the abandoned calls. However, we don't want to calculate the repeat calls based on our adjusted abandoned calls or the original abandoned calls. We want to calculate repeat calls based on the difference between these two because we're really looking for the unusual activity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the original abandoned calls minus the adjusted. And I'm going to multiply that by the assumption that I made, the 70%. Let's copy the formula here. Um, let's do the same calculation in the next column, but using assumption of uh, 120% and copy the formula and th these are the estimated repeat calls right? again these are not the total repeat calls because there's always some kind of repeat calls even these months right here have repeat calls but I'm just, I'm just trying to estimate the unusual repeat calls right here so now that I have my uh, two assumptions and two sets of repeat calls for the four months I want to calculate adjusted received calls. So I will calculate two sets of adjusted received calls because I have two sets of assumptions. 
So uh, the calculation is done by taking the, uh, the actual received calls minus the estimated repeat calls and that's what we get. We can copy this formula for all the months in our data. Now what we can do now is we can chart the data. So let's select this, insert, chart, and I did some kind of a mistake here. I messed up my formula in adjusted received cost too, so let's just fix this. There we go. And here are the two results based on the two different assumptions that I just made. Uh, the orange line is based on the assumption that there are 120% of repeat calls. Uh, the second line, the blue line, that's, um, that's the adjusted received calls based on the assumption that there are 70% repeat calls. So you can see that this data really makes more sense than the original data here. <clears throat> and in fact, I think that the higher assumption, the 120 repeat, 120% repeat cost, the orange line makes more sense. So this would be the adjustment that I would make for, for this data here. So I hope I didn't go through this too quickly. I hope you followed, uh, but if you have any questions, if you don't understand something, you know, just email me and I will answer your question on my website or in the next video. Thank you.